Church. I'm joined by Caroline. Yes, hello. My name is Caroline. I am the worship leader at our Carrollwood campus, Carrollwood location. Yes, we are a church here in the Tampa Bay area. We are here at Lutz, which is where we broadcast. But like she said, we have seven locations across the Bay area. And today we're wrapping up our Summer at Grace series with Pastor Scott Williams. We're Ooh. very excited about it because, man, he's got a great word for us. And I really believe it's going to impact not only you, but someone that you share this with. So take a moment, send this link to someone maybe via text or share it on your social media. Media. But man, one of the other things you can do is download our app. What That's right. Oh my gosh, you can find so many things on our app. You can find events. You can find ways to get signed up for groups. You can learn all about our United, which is our youth group, and our Zone, which is our children's ministry. Anything that you need to know about Grace Me Church, you can find it on the GFC Florida app. Lastly, we want to encourage you today. Tell us where you're watching from because we don't want you just to be someone who's viewing what's going on. We want to be a participant. Tell us if you're watching locally here in Tampa, maybe out of state, maybe out of country. Tell us where you are. We got people in the chat that want to connect with you, help you get involved at Grace. Find your place here at Grace. Now, as for us, we're going to get back with the team. We're going to get ready. Let's all get engaged and worship together. We'll see you in service. See you soon.
that you're working Even when I don't feel that you're working You never stop, you never stop working You never stop, you never stop working Even when I don't see that you're working Even when I don't feel that you're working You never stop, you never stop working You never stop, you never stop working Even when I don't see that you're working Even when I don't feel that you're working You never stop, you never stop talking earlier there's something powerful in this room because when you woke up this morning your body praised the Lord all creation praised the Lord he's the creator what holds you together is his power his grace but there's something powerful when we choose to align with that and give him praise yeah it's cool it's really cool There's something beautiful that when we come together and we say, no, 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 that's who you are. You're the way maker. You're the promise keeper. You're my light when I can't see. Lord, I align with you. Can we come together? And maybe for you the first time, you're like, yeah, I've never done that. All you have to do is say, I agree. I agree. Let's agree together. Let's agree and praise him. We choose you, Lord. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keep, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Now sing so he can hear you. Oh, I sing it out now. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keep, light in the darkness. My you, Lord. I want us all to sing this together. I exalt thee. I exalt thee. I exalt thee. Mm. Oh, God, we praise you. We praise you. I exalt thee. We fill the room, fill the room. I exalt thee. Only Jesus. I exalt thee. Oh, Lord. 
lift our voices, just the voices right now. Sing, I exalt. I exalt thee. I exalt thee. I exalt thee. Oh. church let's go ahead and start this thing off right if you know that God is good all the time let me hear you make some noise you guys are awesome hey I want to start by welcoming everybody join us all around the world online we literally got people joining us from every literally every part I know Los Angeles is in the house we got Dubai in the house Johannesburg South Africa people literally join us from everywhere and then we got all of the campuses we got Lando Lakes in the house we got Clearwater we got Temple Terrace we got Ebor, Carrollwood, South Tampa you got the new campus just opened up in Orlando I'm just joking, but anyway, like, like y'all got campuses everywhere, it seems like. And for those of you guys that may be new, my name is Scott Williams. I'm kind of that guest that's no longer a guest, so I'm not going to go through all the guest introductions. But man, I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to share God's word. I love every time I get a chance to come to Tampa, to come to Grace Family Church and be able to preach. But guess what? Uh, next week, here's what you know, you're starting a brand new series, The War Within. Uh, Pastor Craig will be back kicking that series off, so you'll make sure that you want want to be here, you want to invite your friends, your cousins, your family, invite your enemies, invite people that you don't even like, just invite them, get them through these doors. Like, I love, you know, invite series. Like, it's a new, kind of a new school year. Everybody's excited. They're willing to come to church. So if you will just invite them, I'm telling you, people will come and they will show up. As a matter of fact, like our church, we do this big series every single summer called At The Movies, where we take these, like, blockbuster movies and we pull biblical truths out of them. And so we always have these invite cards for At The Movies. So I love inviting people. So I'll put an invite card in the hand. If I go to a restaurant and, you know, like I go to waiters there or whatever, I'll make sure I put an invite card down, make sure I give a good tip, you know what I'm saying? And so I encourage you guys, when you're out, invite people to this new series. Matter of fact, one of the other things I like to do is when I go to Starbucks, I'll go to Starbucks and, and I'll give like the invite card to the person at the window and say, hey, give it to the car behind me. I want to pay for their, their drinks. And so, and, I, and I'll be honest with you, when I do that, I wish I could just tell you I did the, the real spiritual thing and no matter who was behind me, I would do the whole invite thing. But I'm just going to be honest, like I kind of sized the car up behind me first. Like if it's a, a car with like five teenagers or something in there, I ain't doing it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Remember one time, like, I sides up as a lady behind me, just a lady in a white Mercedes. I'm like, okay, I'm sure she's getting the mocha frappa, whatever she's going to get, right? 
And so I go and I plus, hey, these are some invite cards. You mind just giving this to the car behind me and I'm going to pay for a drink and just let her know that the car in front of her gave these cards, whatever, invited her to church. And so I do that. And she said, okay, the total will be 7666. I'm like, what did she order? She's like, oh, every Friday she comes and buys coffee for the whole office. You know what I'm saying? Like, I should have known something. The total was 7666. The devil is a liar. You know what I'm saying? But I did pay for it anyway. Last thing I do is be a Jesus dude and trying to renege on the deal. But, but again, this is a thing that you'll want to um, invite people to the next series. It's going to be a great series. And, and last time I was here, if you hadn't got a chance to watch the message, go watch it. It was from a couple of weeks ago. But I preached on a miracle about Jesus and Peter walking on water. And one of the things I talked about, I said that there was a miracle that happened before that miracle. It was a miracle about feeding the 5,000s. And so after, I remember after the service last time I was here, I was kind of in the breezeway meeting and greeting people. And I was talking to this guy. He's like, man, like I'd love to hear you unpack the, the feeding of the 5,000s. So anyway, shout out to the man that and told me to unpack it because that's what I'm preaching on this week. We're going to preach on <laughs> feeding the 5,000. Because if you think about it, there's lots of miracles in the Bible but there's only two miracles that are shared in all four Gospels. One of them is the resurrection, and I'll save that message for Pastor Craig and Easter. They can handle that one. And the other one is feeding the 5,000. So that's what I'm going to preach on, feeding the 5,000. And, and here's what I want to tell you guys about when I share God's Word and when I'm preaching. I, I met with a group of pastors just a couple of weeks ago. I do communication training for pastors and for executives. And like the you know, organizational execs, I'm doing their communication training. It's a little bit different. But for pastors, I always tell them, like, look, just preach God's Word. Because here's the, it doesn't matter if you don't like my style, you don't like my flow, you don't like my jokes. You don't like, it doesn't matter because I'm here to tell you, the only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to preach God's Word. And so it's up to God's Word to transform your life. The only thing I'm up here is do, I'm just a mailman to deliver the mail that God has given me to deliver to you. So, so that's what we're going to do. Is we're going to preach the Bible today. Is it okay that we just preach the Bible? Is it okay that we just preach the Bible today? That was kind of weak. One more time. Is it okay that we just preach the Bible today? Okay. I, I like that. Now now I'm ready. Okay. So again, I'm going to go ahead and set the time we're going to look at in Scripture again. So Jesus, it says Jesus fed the 5,000. And what's important to know is when he fed the 5,000, that was men, not including women and children. And scholars tell us he fed somewhere in nearly like 15 to 25,000. That's why the miracle was so big. It was so huge. And so this is a time where Jesus' his ministry is popping. Translation, it's going really, really well, right? <laughs> so he's healing people. He's casting out demons. Like he, the ministry is going well. People are hearing about it. They're seeing it. And so at the same time, what he does is he sends his apostles out to go out and do some of the work of the ministry as well. And so Jesus' ministry is popping. The apostles' ministry is popping. Everything is going good. As a matter of fact, it's going good, and, and the apostles, they come back to Jesus, and, and as they return, you know, he sent them out, and he met with them. They're like, hey, you know, how are things going? And they gave him, like, the universal thing, two thumbs up. In other words, things are looking up. Things are, things are going really, really well. As a matter of fact, the title of today's message is, Things Are Looking Up. And so I want you to turn around to your neighbor right now and say, Things Are Looking Up. I say it every time. Turn around to your second choice now. Turn around to your second choice, your other neighbor, and say, things are looking up. Things are looking up. And so we're going to go ahead and dive in. I, I, I really encourage you to go read all four gospel accounts. But we're going to look at Mark's account today. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to read Mark 6, verses um, 30 through 44. And I'll un come back and we'll unpack it a few verses at a time. Here's what the scripture says. So again, they come back. How are things going? Two thumbs up. Things are looking up. The ministry's popping. Verse 30. The apostles gathered around Jesus and reported to him all that had been done and taught. Then because so many people were coming and going, they did not even have a chance to eat. He said to them, Come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. So they went away by themselves in a boat to a solitary place. But many who saw them leaving recognized them and ran on foot from all the towns and got there ahead of them. When Jesus landed, he saw a large crowd. He had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things. By this time, it was late in the day, so his disciples came to him. This is a remote place, they said. 
and it's already very late. Send the people away so they can go to the surrounding countryside and villages and buy themselves something to eat. But he answered, you give them something to eat. He said to them, that would take more than a half year's wages. Are we to go spend that much on bread to give them to eat? How many loaves do you have, he asked. Go and see. When they found out, they said, five and two fish. Then Jesus directed them to have all the people sit down in groups on the green grass. So they sat down in groups of hundreds and fifties. Taking the five loaves and two fish and looking up to the heaven, they gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to his disciples to distribute to the people. He also divided the two fish among them all. They all ate and were satisfied. And the disciples picked up the 12 basketfuls of broken pieces of bread and fish. The number of men who had eaten was 5,000. I mean, that's all that we need to hear. It's a clear picture of what happened and what happens when Jesus shows up and what happens when we show up and, and when we show up and it's coupled with Jesus showing up. And so what we're gonna do today, is we're talking about things are looking up. We're gonna look at the three keys to make sure that things are looking up. And I think it's important that we have keys because if I gave you three ways to make sure that things are looking up, if I gave you three reasons or this is how you can ensure that, but what does a key do? It's not a trick question. What does a key do? It unlocks some things. And so what's going to happen today, the reason why I want to give you the three keys, because if you will open your spiritual eyes, you will open your spiritual ears, these keys will help unlock some things in your life. They will unlock some things in your relationship. They will unlock some things in your thinking. They will unlock some things in your finances. They will unlock some things that may have been closed off when you walked in here today. They may unlock some things that you were carrying, Lando Lakes. They may unlock some things that you're carrying watching online. And so the first key, if you're taking notes, is this, is you got to stay close. Everybody say, stay close. Everybody say, stay close. Stay close. We're talking about staying close to Jesus. That's important. You got to stay close to Jesus. And this is key. I want you to look at this. The majority of this miracle happened because of the proximity they were close to Jesus. Verse 37. What does the Bible say? But he answered, you give them something to eat. He said to him, that would take more than a half years of wages. Are we to go spend that much on bread and give it to them to eat? So again, they're, they're focused on what they don't have. Jesus said, how many loaves do you have? He asked. Go and see. When they found out, they said five and two fish. And so you're thinking about this, like I'm looking at what the text says. It's like, how many loaves do you have? He's like, we have five and two fish. And I'm thinking about so many times, like the moments where I've had the greatest blessing and breakthrough in my life is those moments where I know that I'm close to Jesus. And I told you the last time I was here, I talked about when I left my, my full-time ministry job. And again, when I was working for the church, like full-time, like it was amazing. God was blessing it. But there's a difference between a good thing and a God thing. And many of you guys, you're settling for a good thing, but there's a God thing that's out there. And when you're close to Jesus, you're able to see and to hear what that God thing is. And so I, I stepped out. I made a decision to, to step out and follow Jesus and to do this thing because it's something about when you're close to Jesus, you're just in tune. And again, it takes, it takes hard work to stay close to Jesus. I mean, I know some of you guys think maybe because we're a pastor, like I, you know, I just, you know, I just wake up in the morning and my Bible opens up and reads itself to me. You know what I'm saying? Like it just hovers and, and then sometimes like my halo gets a little crooked and I got to adjust my locks to make sure the halo is just sitting just right. But that's not the case. I, I got to put in the work. As a matter of fact, uh, I, I found myself sometimes like I'd wake up in the morning because here's the, I wake up at four something in the morning every morning. I don't even need to set no alarm clock. But what I found out is I'd wake up in the morning and the, the first thing I would do is I would grab my phone and, and look at Instagram. You know, and before I know it, if, if, you, if that's what you do, you'll find yourself, I don't know, like looking at Instagram. I was looking, you know, a year ago, I was looking at people falling off of milk crates. And now if you look on your Instagram, next thing you know, you, you're getting so caught up in all the monkey business that's going on that you're, you're not focusing on the Jesus business that's going on. And so, so kind of my thing I like to do now is like I make sure the first thing I do is before my feet hit the ground, I make sure that I'm looking up to the heavens. 
So before you step down, make sure that you look up and just give thanks. The first app that you open, let it be your Bible app. Just read one scripture. I'm not telling you need to read a whole chapter. Just read a scripture. Just what you're doing is you're focusing. And by a show of hands, how many of you guys like to sleep with a TV on? Show of hands. Okay, many of you do. And, and here's why, again, some of you guys, you're probably sleeping with the news on. I mean, some of you guys, you may still sleep with the Disney Channel on. I don't know. Like, some of you fellas, it's Sports Center, just re- over, and over and over. The one thing that I started doing was like, I started just turning on worship music on the TV. And I kept it on, but it's amazing what happens is that I go to sleep and what's happening is worship is flowing. When I wake up before my feet even hit the ground, the first thing I'm hearing is I'm hearing worship and it just begins to set the tone because what happens is you have a choice when you're staying close to Jesus that you can set the tone or you can allow all your outward circumstances and situations begin to set the tone for you. But you gotta be willing to stay close to Jesus. I mean, you think about it like this little boy that was there, Like, how was he able to even hear what was going on? The reason he was able to hear what was going on, why? It's because he was close to Jesus. And it's amazing what happened. So he's there. He's seeing what's going on. He's he's got his his lunch there, and he's carrying his lunch pail. And here's what I know. There's a lot of people that had their lunch pail there that day. But the little boy was the only one that was willing to, to give up his lunch pail. And I told y'all last time about this bread. I don't know what kind of fish they had right there, but I can guarantee you the bread they had right here was this Cheesecake Factory bread. You know what I'm saying? Like, that was the five loaves. Can I get an amen? You know what I'm saying? Like, but, uh, but I guess so serious, like, we sit there, so he's carrying it, he's up there. But the only reason he was able to hear what they needed is why? Because he was close enough to Jesus. Many of you guys, you're not hearing what Jesus is saying to you because you're not in a close enough proximity. You can't even eavesdrop on what he wants to tell you, what he has for you, what relationship he has for you, the relationship you're supposed to close, the decision that you're supposed to make, the steps that you're supposed to take. He's trying to tell you, but you're not close enough. You got to make sure that you stay close to Jesus. So the little boy, he's like, look, like I'm here. And one thing I love about this is that like you got to be willing, like when you're staying close to Jesus, things begin to happen. They begin to happen differently. You'll be wanting to invite people to church. You want to share what's going on. As a matter of fact, Andrew, like, he was known as the the one who would invite people. As a matter of fact, Andrew's the one that invited and brought Peter to Jesus. Andrew's also the one that that found a little boy with with, with the lunch pail and and brought him up to come share his food with Jesus. And that's what he did. And so you got to ask yourself the question, are you close to Jesus? In all of our locations, Temple Terrace, Carrollwood, South Tampa, are you close to Jesus? Here at Lutz. Ebor, those online, are you close to Jesus? Because you you can lie to yourself, but you can't lie to Jesus. He already knows. My question is, are you close to Jesus? Because it's amazing when you're you're close to Jesus, things begin to happen. Things begin to change. But you got to, when you're close to Jesus, I'm here to tell you, things will begin to shift in your life. When you're you're close, like, you're like, well, like, because some of you right now, like, you're wrestling. Okay, Pastor Scott, you tell me to be close to Jesus, but I don't feel like Jesus is close to me. Like, where's Jesus when my mom has stage four cancer? Where was Jesus last year with all this COVID stuff? And some of you are like, well, Pastor Scott, I just feel like Jesus ain't really close. I feel like he's really far away. I mean, I'm going to just use this illustration. Maybe this will help you understand it. It reminds me of the story of this old couple for 20 years, they, they lived in a farm town. They would go to, they would go in town to the store, and, and and some of you young folks may not know this, but back in the day, like farm trucks used to have like a old trucks had like just one seat. It was called a bench seat, and so like they would just sit there, and they would all sit there on the same seat. You could put three people on the same seat. She said they would go to town, and she would sit all up underneath him, and they would just cuddle all the way to town. And and again, she one day they were riding, and she just looked over. And she said, "Babe, what happened to us?" We seem so distant. I remember we used to always cuddle all the way to town. And now I'm over here. I'm just at the window. I'm looking out. And I just got a question. Like, why are we so distant? And he looks at her and he said, babe, he said, I haven't moved. I always drive. So some of you are wondering where Jesus is. And why doesn't he feel close? And he sent me here to remind you that he doesn't move. He's right there, but he needs you to make the decision that you're going to do what? That you're going to stay close 
to Jesus. And the second thing, if you're taking notes, is this. You got to be willing to stay connected. Everybody say, stay connected. Verse 39. Then Jesus directed them to have all the people sit down in what? Sit down in groups on the green grass. So they sat down in groups of hundreds and fifties. Taking the five loaves and two fish and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to his disciples to distribute to all the people. He also divided the fish among them all. I think it's important as we look at it is that when I'm looking at this text, I'm looking at the last night, it says, it says he did what? He set them down in groups. He says, they get in, what did he do? He, he, he set them to sit down in groups. He broke up in groups. He set them in groups in the green grass. Then he did what? He looked up to the heavens. And it's amazing. Some of the greatest blessings and miracles, they happen in groups. That's why it's important that you, that you get in a group and that you stay connected in biblical community. And here's what I also look at is that some of the greatest miracles and blessings, they happen through a group. Like Jesus could have just blessed the whole group. You guys are all blessed. But what did he do? He said, no, I want everybody to sit down. We, we need to get some order and structure here. I mean, what you got to understand, like some of the greatest blessings, they're not to, to come to you, but they're to go through you, to go to somebody else. I mean, look at some of the greatest blessings happening. It's like some of you guys, you're a result of that amazing blessing that went through your parents and it's going to you. When I look at my sons and I look at what my mom set up for me, like, and then I was the first one in our family to graduate from college. And as I look with our, our sons and all the success they're having in dental school and college football, the thing was the blessing was to come go through me to my boys. And maybe as you're one, like, how can God use you? You have an amazing story. That stuff that you went through, it's not in vain. It's supposed to go through you to somebody else. But you got to be willing to get in a group. You got to be willing to do what you need to do and do your part. Watch how God blesses you. I'm telling you, so many people, like, they're, they're missing the opportunity for God to be able to use them because they're, they're trying to stay in their comfortable. I oh, just, just, just want to be comfortable. I just want to just do this. I just want to be comfortable. But you got to bring people in. That's why Andrew was so cool. Like, Andrew, like, hey, man, y'all come in here. Like, Andrew would invite people all the time. He would invite people. I told you, he's the one that invited Peter to Jesus. And as a matter of fact, if you look at the name Andrew in the Greek, it literally means Andy Drew. So Andy Drew, people, I'm just playing. Some of y'all really bought that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm just going to tell y'all, like, pastors will say, like, this is what it says in the Greek. A lot of times, that's just pastors bloviating to try to act like they really smart. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Most of the time, it don't. Andy Drew, that's funny, though. You know what I'm saying? Y'all like, wow, Andy Drew. My name's Andrew, man. I'm inviting people. Anyway. So, like, but I think it's important. Like, you got to bring your family. You got to bring your friends. So he invited people. And again, I wasn't there, but here's what I imagine happened. He invited them, they started getting in groups, and it never fails when you're in a group. Like, different people start to emerge and evolve. There's like the leader that involves, like, hey, what's up, man? That's what we're going to do. Like, got this. And it's like, you know, somebody's going to be like the organizer. All right, guys, no, make sure you're in this row. Got to be in a straight line. We got to be in a straight line. And then there's the encourager. Yes, guys, we're excited to be in a group. This is my Bible. Like, we're just ready, buddy, ready to go. We're excited. We're just in the group. Let's just get going. Like, and then there's always like a negative Nancy. I don't know why we in this group. I don't even like grass. I'm allergic to grass. Why are we sitting on the grass? You know what I'm saying? And then it's always like, there's always a hater in the group as well. You know what I'm saying? Like, they just hate it for no reason. Like, we don't want them in the group. They ain't even been vaccinated. You know what I'm saying? They ain't, they ain't, they ain't been vaccinated. You know what I'm saying? Like, but you can, but it takes, again, it's all, it takes all of those people in the group to make it go round. Like my group, I've been in a small group. There's one couple I've been in a small group with for over 16 years. As a matter of fact, I remember when we first had our first small group meeting, their daughter was in a stroller, and now she's in a stroller. You know what I'm saying? Like she's driving. Like, but we've had so many life experiences together, and, and the groups are important. And all of our locations, those online, I want you to be honest because you can't lie in church. Just be honest. How many of you guys, like you thought about it, but... But you haven't, but how many of you guys have, haven't actually got into a group? By show of hands, by show of hands, don't lie. Raise your hand, raise your hand. Go raise them up, raise them up. God knows, I'm telling you, raise them up, raise them up. Okay. And here's what I want you to do. I want you to take your phones out right now. All y'all that raised your hand, those of you online, take your phone out. No, I'm waiting on you. Yes, if you think I'm talking to you, yes, you. 
And what I want you to do, I want you to, to, to text CONNECT to 81313. Go ahead and do it now. There's all types of groups. I mean, I went on Grace's website, and I went to, I texted and went through the group. Man, there's so many different groups. Like, you got groups of people that just want to go fishing. You got groups that just love Bucks fans. You got Rays fans. You got people that like to hunt. You got people that are married. You got people that want to be in Financial Peace Universe. You got people that are single. Like, come on, I'm telling you, a single group, you ain't got to worry about swiping right. You can get in the right group. I'm just saying, like, just get in a group. Because you guys are kicking off a brand new group series in two weeks on the 22nd. And many of you guys, I'll come back a year from now. And some of you guys will have made the decision to get in a group. And others of you will still be sitting here in your comfort zone. Doing what you've always done. Because you don't want to get in a group. Because you don't want to step out and do what, this is not, this is what Jesus is saying. This is how he broke it. He's showing us how the miracles work. And some of you guys, you're not going to make that decision because you're comfortable. It kind of reminds me of that, that meme. You've seen it on social media. It's like the little girl, and, and she's got her little teddy bear, and she's sitting there with her teddy bear, and she's got her teddy bear, and then, then you got Jesus there, and, he, and he's got the bear behind his hand. And many of you guys, that's what you're like, no, but I want to be in my comfort zone. I want it just like I've always had it. And Jesus is trying to say, look. If you are willing to surrender your comfort zone, I have a bigger and better blessing for you. God can't bless what you're unwilling to surrender. You got to do your part. Yeah, you can clap for that because I'm preaching better than y'all respond, and I'll tell you that. It's amazing what happens, but you got to be willing to do your part. Some of you guys, well, I don't know. I, mean, I look back when you, know, you talk about staying connected, like I, as I looked, I was in group, made these different decisions. And, and what you understand is that like it talks about, he says he did what he says he took and he broke the loaves, right? So he took the loaves, so he was carrying the loaves, but Jesus said he took it and he broke it, right? He broke it, then he gave it to the heavens and then he blessed it. He broke it and then he blessed it. What you got to understand, if Jesus is the one that's doing the breaking, he will be the one that does the blessing. So some of you guys, what you got to understand is he's breaking that relationship and he's going to bless your new relationship. He's breaking those negative thoughts and he's going to bless you with some new thoughts. He's breaking that old situation and he's blessing you with a new situation. If he's doing the breaking... He will do the blessing. Now, don't confuse that. He's not going to bless those silly and stupid decisions that you're making on your own. You keep doing stupid things, you will keep winning stupid prizes. But if you stay close to Jesus, you get connected to godly people, then what he will do is he will bless you. And that's what he reminded me to. Like, look, get in a group. You got to stay in communion. You can't do this on your own. I know you've tried it. I know it seems rough, but it's amazing what God will do if you will just do that part. I'm just going to tell you guys, to be honest, like some of you guys, let's just keep it 100. You need to get off of Facebook and you need to get in his book. And this is when the band will come play behind me as I close. Wow, they all came out together. They was, they was prepared today. So first point is what we're going to stay what? Stay it's three points, guys. So come on now. Online, everybody, we're going to stay close. We're going to stay connected. And the last point, if you're taking notes, is stay satisfied. Everybody say satisfied. Y'all go ahead, and just whenever y'all want to start playing. Okay. All right, go ahead. Verse 42. They all ate and were satisfied. And the disciples picked up 12 basketfuls of broken pieces of the bread and fish. The number of men who had eaten was 5,000. You see, many of you, think about this, like, many of you can't focus on what you have because your eyes are always so distracted on what you don't have. The disciples said, hey, we ain't got enough food. Jesus looked at them like, yo, what, what do you got? Go, Y'all go look, five and two, okay. Like many of you, your food is getting cold because you're looking at what's on everybody else's plate. And Jesus telling like, you, yo, you got more than enough. You got to quit worrying about what they're doing. 
Comparison will rob you of the joy of Jesus trying to remind you that you got everything that you need. You plus Jesus is more than enough. And many of you guys are like, well, I just don't know if I got what it takes and whatever. But he says, it says they ate and they were satisfied. It didn't say that they were settling. It said that they were satisfied. I think this is important. As I look at this text, it says again, they had broken pieces of bread. It says it ate and they were satisfied. And here's what I think is the most missed part of this story. I told you before that the 5,000 men that he fed, that number doesn't include women and children because the women and children weren't counted. Isn't it ironic? Come on now, wait for it. That the person that Jesus used for this blessing and the miracle is the one that wasn't even counted. He used the little boy who had the fish and the loaves, and that's the one that he used to do the miracle. I mean, some of you guys may think that you're insufficient. You may think that you don't have what it takes, but God wanted me to remind you, but what you have is more than enough. If Jesus is doing the breaking, he will do the blessing. You feel like you got insufficient funds I'm telling you he's the greatest overdraft protection that you could ever have you got to just keep being satisfied to know that Jesus has got you but what he's saying are you willing to give what you have you wonder why you're not being blessed Given that 50% effort, 50% of your relationship? Because here's what I know. There's a lot of other people that day that packed their lunch as well. But the only person that was willing to say, yo, Jesus, I know there's a lot of people out here. I ain't got much, but I'm willing to give you what I have. And God wanted me to tell you that you may not feel like you have much, but give what you have and watch how I bless it. Because we serve an amazing God that wanted me just to come here and tell you, young lady, sir, ma'am, couple, you have more than enough, but I need you to give what you have. Let's pray. Father, I thank you so much for, uh, for your word. I thank you for this story. I thank you for this young boy who wasn't even counted. I thank you for so many people in this room that have been counted out, and you're going to use them in a mighty way. And all across this room and in all of our locations, I just want you to be real honest. You say, you know what, man, I, I haven't been as close to Jesus as I need to. I need to do a better job, and I haven't stayed connected. I haven't been in a group. I haven't been doing my part. And more importantly, I just hadn't totally been satisfied. I'm always looking at the next thing. I'm always comparing, and I want to walk out here today different. And if that's you, and that's your prayer at all of our locations, just raise all those hands up right now. I just want to pray for those. You say, man, God, I want to do things a little bit different. God, I pray right now for every single hand that's being raised right now. God, I don't know the details of their situation, God, but I pray right now that you would draw them closer to you, God. I pray right now that you are beginning to set, to de de distinguish the exact life group, the exact small group, the exact, as you guys call it, the exact group that they need to get connected to, the right people that they need to get connected to. And I pray that those will be lasting relationships, God. I pray that you would use them in a mighty way this week. You can put your hands down now with heads still bowed and eyes still closed. Every single campus, everybody just listening. Here's what I know, that in a room this size and so many people joined online, that there's so many people that if life ends today, just keeping it 100, many people are going to miss heaven by 12 inches because they have a head knowledge but not a heart acceptance. But here in a few moments, you have the opportunity to make the most important decision of your entire life. And I'm not asking you, have you ever sang a Christian song? Have you ever done a good deed? Have you ever, I'm asking you, have you ever truly surrendered your life to Jesus? And what you need to know right now, as you're thinking about making the most important decision of your entire life, the enemy's whispering in your ear, that's not you. That's not for you. Don't do that. That ain't for you. Just you can do it next week. You can do it tomorrow. But no, the Holy Spirit is speaking to you. That's what that inner thing that you're feeling right now, that's the Holy Spirit, that's the prompting of Jesus. So if you're here today, you say, you know what? No longer playing the church game. No longer acting like a Christian. I want to surrender my life to 
Jesus today. If you're here today, you say, you know what, Jesus, I want you to come into my life. I want you to be my Lord. I want you to be my Savior. I want you to wash my sins away, and I want you to make me brand new. If that's you and that's your prayer, right where you are right now, just raise your hand high. At all of our camps, just raise your hand high and keep it up. Online, type in the chat. Just keep your hand up high. Just keep your hand up high. I know hands are going up at every single one of our campuses. Just continue to raise those hands. Just keep it up. Online, type in the chat. I see so many of you. I see so many over to the right, to the front, to the back, in the balcony, at all of our locations. I know hands are going up. Just keep those hands up. This is why we're here. So here's what we're going to do, Grace Family Church. We're going to pray this prayer out loud together in faith. So I want every single person, whether you're online, whether you're at a campus, I want you to repeat this prayer after me loudly, loudly saying, Heavenly Father, come on, you can do better than that. You're louder than that at a Bucks game. I want every single person loudly to repeat this prayer after me saying, Heavenly Father, thank you for sending your son Jesus who died on the cross for my sins. Today I choose to make Jesus my Lord and my Savior. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. Change me and make me brand new. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Come on, Grace Family Church. Come on now. Let's give it up for changed lives. Come on now. We serve an amazing God. Come on now. I'm telling you guys, for those of you guys that just made that decision, by far the most important decision of your entire life, man, we're going to get you some next steps. I want to say God bless you guys. Thank you so much for having me. Man, thank you guys so much for staying with us all the way through the end. We just want to encourage you, if you took that step, just like Pastor Jeff said, Text yes to 81313 if you accepted Christ or recommitted your life to Christ. What an amazing opportunity that you have before you, not just to make that decision, but to stay connected and get your next steps. Man, we'd love to send you a Following Jesus book. We'd love to help you find your place here at Grace. We are so pumped that you've made this choice. Now, with that said, it was also an inspiring word just for all of us that maybe have already had that decision made. Man, let's share this. Let's continue to get the word out. The share goes a long way. An invite goes a long way when it comes from you. Man, thank you for joining us this weekend. We're excited for next week. Tune in as we start our new series with Pastor Craig. It's gonna be a great time. We will see you next week.